Welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. It is your girl, Kiki Reader, and we are going to do a standalone today. And this recommendation came by, I'm going to call her a super fan, Miss Stacey Ann Barnes. I appreciate you so much. She always shows so much love. And she told me about an author named Cora Riley. And so we're going to do a standalone by Cora. And the name of that one is called Fragile Longing. This book is about mafia families in the cities of Indianapolis, Minneapolis, and I want to say Cincinnati. And it reaches a little bit into Las Vegas as well. So when we talk about a lot of things, we do have to remember that, you know, this is coming from a a certain set of rules in a lifestyle that is a little different to maybe us on the outside, but to them, it seems normal. So Danilo Mancini is set to be an underboss and he was set to marry someone named Serafina Mioni. And she was kidnapped by a boss out of Las Vegas. His name was Remo Falcone and she was returned. But she wasn't the same, and she called off the engagement with Danilo. So there is a war right now going on between uh, these two families. And I forget their exact names (laughs) of the Warren families. But there's a whole war going on. And so after this breakup, it kind of messed up an alliance that was supposed to happen. Okay? And so... After a lot of conversation, the decision has been made that Sophia Mioni, who is at this point 12 years old, is set to marry Danilo when she becomes of age when she hits 18. So this is all kind of problematic. Oh. <laughs> so Danilo right now is 22 years old. Okay. So of course, because she's she's 12, you know, he's not going to touch her. He, you know, doesn't try to be around her, but she has always had this crush on him. And so she is in awe of the fact that she gets to marry her crush. Serafina comes in to have a conversation with Sophia and she lies to her, right? She says that, you know, this was a deal that, you know, he, you know, Danilo wanted, but I'm like, that's weird you know so she's 12 though so she doesn't understand everything that's going on she's not dumb but she doesn't understand the full you know scale of what's going on but Serafina didn't want her to feel like she was just being treated as a runner-up but that's exactly what was happening (laughs) but she didn't want her sister to feel bad um she's always had this complex apparently with being compared to, we're just going to call her Fina now because that's her nickname and that's what they start calling her. And I don't want to say Serafina a gazillion times. So she, Sophia has always been compared to Fina. And so again, if it, she finds out that he's only marrying you because he still needs this alliance to go, <laughs> might not make her feel good. Even though they are very well aware these are arranged marriages. Even the marriage that was supposed to be between Fina and Danilo, it was an arranged marriage. You know, that's what it was. So we come back to this point where she's talking to her sister. Her sister's all like she understands, blah, blah, blah. And then we find out the true deal because Fina goes and talks to her dad and she's kind of upset because she's like, you know, why are you doing this? But this is what the full deal was. So Danilo was willing to marry Sophia In the event that Samuel, who is Fina's and Sophia's brother, actually it's uh, even more, it's uh, Fina's twin. If Samuel marries Danilo's sister, Emma, then he will go ahead and he'll marry Sophia. Yes, it's a lot of names and we got to keep track of them. (laughs) So Samuel agreed. So here we go. And here's the thing with Emma. Emma's in a wheelchair because she was in a car accident. And so in that community, they tend to look down on, you're like damaged goods in the, in their world. So 
he wanted to try and secure someone for her without her knowing. So the knowledge of this is never supposed to come to light. Problematic as hell, but okay. So then Fina and Danilo have a conversation and because, you know, Fina's like, you know, why are you agreeing to this? You know, and he's just like, listen, I chose you. You're the one that ended it. I still wanted to be with you even after you had gone off and allegedly been defiled. So Sophia overhears this and of course it hurts her beyond, right? Because she's had this crush on this guy. This man it's it's so problematic. Um you going to hear me say that a lot. And um She's got to wait six years, of course, wait until she's 18 and then they'll get married. But again, this is still hard for her to hear that he didn't really want to marry her. But again, girl, he's 22. You're 12. No, he's not going to want to marry you. You know, (laughs) he's had to be another force behind it. Danilo then finds out from, uh, Petro, who is Fina, Sophia, and Samuel's dad, that Fina is 17 weeks pregnant. So uh Fina's family, they're having a Christmas party, and he's gonna still go. He wasn't going to, but he didn't want to appear as if he was still stuck on Serafina, even though he still was. So his father, I think his name was was it Danilio, something like that he is really sick and they don't know if he's going to make it you know until christmas so he takes emma with him to the party um danilo does seem happy that you know emma's able to get out of the house and stuff like that because she doesn't go to a lot of things because i think she feels some type of way because she's not able to walk she's not able to do like everyone else and that can weigh on a person and she's like 12 she's around the same age as sophia um we find out that seraphina is going to keep the baby and i'm kind of like okay you're going to keep the baby out and that's what made me kind of wonder Okay, was she really violated or not to say that you wouldn't want to keep it if you were violated. I'm not saying that, but I just wondered like, okay, was she really violated or did she like fall for her alleged captor? I was just kind of curious about that. And so um, months pass, she has a set of twins and we find out she's going to leave. And Sophia's just like, what? You know? Because she's more than likely never going to talk to her because she's leaving. She's going to be with Remo Falcone, which is in an imposing family that her current, her actual family is at war with. And so, of course, it's a lot for Sophia to take in. Uh, She's really hurt because she was close with her sister. But this is the choice that's being made. So... Sophia has a best friend named Anna. Um, her family is like the cap. She's a capo's daughter. Uh, and her parents come over and they're having this whole shouting match. It's a whole big thing. And um, I guess what had happened is they had actually captured Remo Falcone. And Fina helped rescue Falcone. And she did it by drugging her own brother Samuel to make sure Remo got free so everybody's pissed at her like yeah she can't come back (laughs) like her doing that she chose the side so this is a whole lot somebody that was such a you know integral part of the family is now just gone they're still alive but they're just gone and you can't have any contact with them it's kind of sad Danilo was there when this whole thing went down. So he, of course, is pissed off. Um, I don't think he was really in love with Fina, but I think it was a matter of she was the one that everybody wanted. So I think it was just the idea that Remo took that away from him, that pride 
is what makes him so enraged. Um, but it's just kind of like, listen, clearly the choice was made. She don't want you. She wants Remo. Listen, she got kids with him, you know, and that's where she wants to be. So to me, I think it's a waste of energy um, to sit up there and be so upset about her, especially if you ain't have no emotions for her. And I can understand if you was in love and this is a hard hit for you, but you weren't even in love with the bitch. So I don't, I'm like, why are we so upset? I just don't, I don't get that. But he gets uh, shit face drunk at a bar. He's not going to drink and drive because that's how his sister got in a car accident um, with her bodyguard. And so um, he called Pietro, told him he's drunk. You know, can I stay at your house? And so Pietro comes and get him, comes and gets him and he crashes at their place. So the next morning, Sophia gets up. She goes to check on her dad and he's like, go put some clothes on. Danilo's here. And she's like, why? And dad was just like, he was having a rough time. He needed to stay the night. And she knew that meant he got drunk because he's still stuck with Serafina. <laughs> so she ran into him. Quick conversation. Um, little encounter. I don't really like, I'm going to say this, and this is how I feel. I do not like any of their interactions because I just feel like it's so inappropriate. You know, I don't like it. I don't want you talking to each other. I just, I'm just <laughs> Listen, we've all been young and we've all looked at older people and had a crush. I get that, but I don't like the interactions. And he's not doing anything inappropriate. He's not, but I don't like it because she longs for him and she's trying to like get him to fall for her. And she's, you know, and she's such a young age. And that just, that really disturbs me. <laughs> so. A, a, quite a bit of this i'm not gonna go because i just i don't i just don't like the interactions i can't help it a couple weeks pass and um he goes out again danilo i think with one of his friends marco and um marco sends up a blonde for him he doesn't want to talk he literally just told her don't say anything just suck my dick and that's what happened so then we fast forward three years she's now 15 i think she's almost 16 close to 16 and she is now seeing photos, I guess, little paparazzo. They're finding, they're putting up photos of him. She's been seeing over these past few years with him with different blonde women. It's always a blonde woman. And so in her head, she's like, oh my gosh, she's trying to find Serafina's replacement. He clearly hasn't gotten over her. So Serafina, uh, Serafina and Remo, like they've gotten married. She looks happy in the photos that she sent. Um, and she's giving Sophia a little piece about the situation when she saw those photos. Um, her uh twin brother, Samuel, he doesn't handle it too well. They don't really talk about her anymore. Like literally, they just kind of stop talking about it, it just brings up too much pain. And so they just don't talk about her. So I was like, that's sad. But at the same time, we kind of knew that was the situation that it was going to be. Um, So let's fast forward another year. She's almost 16. She decides she's going to go blonde for her 16-year-old party, birthday party. And so she goes to the salon, comes out, blonde's hair. Girl looks almost like the spitting image of Fina because um, they had the same bone structure. And she even has her sister's blue eyes. It's creepy. So when she goes out to the car, her brother like kind of jumps, you know, had to do a double take. And he's like, what did you do? And she's like, what? I just wanted to change. But everybody's not stupid. They know clearly you're trying to look like your sister. So then she goes home. The parents see her, freaks her out a little bit. They try and go, oh, looks nice. you know, but she, the, the mother was freaked out as well. Um, now her friend, Anna, I like because Anna's going to tell the truth. She doesn't bullshit. And she was like, why'd you do it? She's like, you were beautiful before because she had like auburn hair. And she's like, why did you do it? And she's like, it's, it's not that it looks bad. She's like, but you don't look like you. You know, you look exactly like your sister. And she just kind of felt like it would help everyone because deep down everybody missed their sister. I'm okay that could have been a portion of it but the truth is the mere fact that you saw him 
the overwhelming reason that you did this is because you saw him dealing with women with blonde hair and you're again trying to get him to want you and so you're trying to give him the image that's it and the mere fact that you know you look just like seraphina with this hair that's what you want it's it's crazy and so anna called her out and was like that's not fully why you're doing this you're doing this because of danilo and you need to be honest with yourself you know you've been seeing pictures of him with these women and that's why you did it she just told her the truth <laughs> she has a party of course all eyes are on her and then danilo sees her he freaks out because he's like why did you do that to your hair he's like you need to change that back you need to go back to it he said you need to do it before we do our engagement photos which I think are supposed to be done on her 16th birthday. Again, so prob so problematic. But you know what? I think in those states, Indianapolis, their consent dates are something different. But again, he's not supposed to have any contact with her. Um, he She's going to get her engagement ring on her 16th birthday at the party or whatever, but they're still not supposed to have any type of interaction or anything like that. It's, it's still, it's wild to me. But I'm still just kind of like, why y'all just couldn't wait until she was 18 to make the announcement? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the part I didn't get. It could have waited. Like, you know, Mafia's close-knit. Everybody knows everybody pretty much. So everyone would have known, like, she was promised to him. You know what I mean? Which is crazy in itself. But okay. But, like, why, why do... I don't know. Again, like I said, parts of this book was so problematic. <laughs> So she decides she's not going to change her color just yet. She's just going to cut it. So she cut it in like this nice bob. It did look better. Her brother even it was like, yeah, that's much better. But she still kept it blonde just kind of as a defiance because Danilo had told her to go back to her auburn brown hair or whatever. But whatever. I still feel like she's holding on to that color for that for the reason of Danilo. I do feel bad for her because it's like she's already young, right? And so she's already not feeling that confident about herself. And then you add all this other stuff and and it's just a bad combination. It is. So I do feel bad for her. But good grief. So she has they have the engagement slash birthday party. Um, the announcement's made. It's also made that, you know, Samuel and Emma are gonna get married as well. And it's gonna be um i want to say that next summer or a little later so maybe they did it on her 17th birthday her engagement maybe they did that because they were supposed to be married that following summer which would have been after she turned 18 so we fast forward a little bit again i told you i'm trying to get through this because i don't really like too much of the interactions with them so he's like 25, 26. She's like 17. Um, They go to a cabin. It's Danilo's. And they wind up being their bodyguards as well. Um, Emma comes. All, have, they have a great time. She did try to do some stuff to get his attention. Because um, she wanted to kiss him. And that pissed me off. Because again, the dude is 26. You are like 17. Cut the shit. So, But he, of course, didn't cave. And I was thankful for it. So, Sophia winds up um, setting up a plan with Anna because she's decided she's going to go to his uh, bachelor party, which is going to be at um, his cabin, lodge, or whatever. And Anna, at first, was trying to talk her out of it, but when she cl clearly saw the girl wasn't going to do it, you know, was still wanting to do it, she was like, all right, well, I'll help you plan it. So the plan was she's going to put on a blonde wig and she's going to try and trick him to kiss her. And this was supposed then like she was going to reveal herself and then let him know how pissed she off was, how pissed off she was about him fucking all these different women that are blonde and this bullshit with him still being stuck on Fina, right? This was the plan. I don't think this is a good plan, but she's 17. She thought it was a good plan. <laughs> it's dark she gets his attention with that blonde wig of course he winds up taking her outside and he tells her 
he has her against the tree and he's like i want to fuck you against this tree like he's talking to her so dirty and filthy and of course this is not what she was expecting and when he had even asked her i'm gonna fuck you can i fuck you and she said yes she was like it's like she didn't know what else to say so again this is why these little interactions pissed me off because i was like you shouldn't have fucking did this because it didn't make sense this was not going to work and if you really wanted to you know execute this little plan the minute he started talking to you you could have said right then nope it's me so just because i have blonde hair da 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 because she had let her hair grow back um by this point um and it's like you could have just said it then but you didn't because the truth is you wanted to feel that man and now it's a whole thing so he went to effer he put a condom on but he could tell she was too tight and of course blood was on his dick so he pulled out and he was like oh shoot and she said something and he recognized that it was her and he freaked out because again this was not how their first interaction was supposed to go and he damn sure didn't know it was her now she's all hurt and in shock and i'm like why would you put your this was girl she was so not ready for this that's why i felt like they didn't need to be engaged they didn't need to have any any inner interactions you know she didn't need to know he had a cabin she didn't need to know nothing about what he had going on whatever she saw in the newspapers oh well but or blogs or whatever fine but she didn't need to be anywhere near him because it just wasn't a good idea and then she concocted this plan and it completely backfired on her and now she feels miserable and it's like oh my gosh she's not who i thought he was because in her brain she's made him up to be this prince this prince charming even though he goes cold in front of her she still put him he's always been a gentleman to her and so she's had this prince charming complex when it came to him and it's like oh my gosh she's not that she wasn't expecting that type of talk because she didn't have any experience like this she don't know i just was like this is just too much so sophia of course is stunned but she eventually falls asleep because he took her in the um took her in the cabin and had her in our room, let her go to sleep. So the next morning, um, Anna comes in because Anna they had got up there because Santini, who is Anna's bodyguard, had snuck him up there because she got some dirt on Santini. So <laughs> that's how she gets him to do stuff. Cause again, they weren't even supposed to be at that party, right? But Santini brought him up there. So she's pissed off when she's looking for um when anna's looking for sophia sophia tells her what happened and anna just kind of looks at her and says okay are you done yet like have you gotten this out of your system pretty much how much are you going to have to keep doing to yourself before you figure out that you got to stop this you know so then Samuel comes, he was pissed, he was passed out drunk, and he comes to pick the girls up, and he's all mad at Danilo, and Danilo's like, what are you mad at me for? Like, I didn't know she was going to be here. So they had decided they're not going to say anything to anybody because this is a pure violation, whether it was a mistake or trickery or whatever, this is violation, and there are steep consequences, and so they're just not going to say anything. And they don't want any more scandal. She definitely doesn't want any more scandal on the Mione name. So they're just not going to say anything that that happened. But I just, I don't know. It just pissed me off because it was like this whole thing was about you saying something of what pissed you off and you didn't do it. But then again, I felt like you should have said that when you old enough to, even though, I mean, honestly, is she really going to be old enough at 18 to have this conversation? Probably not. But at least then technically it's legal you know i don't know it was just team too much so we finally get to her 18th birthday um she um has to go uh well it's right before her 18th birthday she's got to go to a fitting um the first dress she picks is perfection it's the one she wants danilo has been texting her a couple of times to check on her um but she started getting snippy with him because she didn't want to talk to him 
And so then he stopped texting her. We get to her 18th birthday party. Girl looks stunning. She has on one of those dresses that the back is open all the way to like right above the ass. It looks stunning. Her hair's grown out. It's long. Um, Anna does her makeup. She looks amazing. So she had a great time, but she talked very little with Danilo. Um, he gave her this uh, gold necklace with a diamond uh, teardrop uh, pendant. And she thought it was pretty. Um, but she was pretty much still trying to keep her walls up around him. And he was kind of thinking like, wow, now he wanted her to be around, you know, because now she wasn't no kid anymore. You know, before she was a fucking kid. Um, so now he's determined to try and make it up to her, try and win her affection. And then she finds out that Samuel has been talking to Fina. And so she had asked him, well, you know, can you give me her number or can you just give her my number? And if she wants to call me, she will. So he finally agrees to do it. And Fina winds up calling her a few days, a couple days later and they have a conversation. She's doing really well. She does miss her family. Um, she of course wants pictures of the wedding and Sophia wants pictures of the twins. And so at first she was kind of hesitant about doing it, but then she went ahead and she sent the pictures and, um, it's just sad because they, they are family and they do want to be in each other's lives, but because of the families they are a part of, they're at war. It's just not, it's just not really truly feasible at this point. And that's so sad. So wedding day comes and she of course has nerves and she's getting ready to walk down the aisle. All eyes are on her. He, of course, is stuck on her. Um, they go to the reception in their car on the way there. He had bought these rings. They were like white. His was white gold and hers was like a rose gold faded into white gold with diamonds in it. And it was like a symbolization of the two of them. Like he was cold. She was warm. And he was supposed to talk to her about that. But because she was so standoffish and he got scared as well, he didn't want to say anything emotional. And clearly he could also tell she was still upset with him. So he just didn't say anything. So then at the reception, everyone's dancing and Danilo sees Emma over in the corner, you know, in her, in her wheelchair. And Sam was like, you know, Samuel was dancing with other people and this pisses him off. So he goes over, picks his sister up out of the chair and he dances with her and they have a great time. Sophia comes over and she kind of looked at him in a different way. Like she thought that was just so amazingly sweet of what he did and so she was like you know i'll stay with emma you know my feet hurt anyway from dancing and so danilo left he went outside and he's going to go talk to samuel samuel apparently was just sending some kissy faces to someone and um danilo was like what the fuck you know you need to stop that shit and he was like you was fucking blondes all the way up until you got married so how you go how you gonna come at me <laughs> So then um, he says, I haven't fucked the blonde in, in however long it's been. I think it's been like over six months. So it's been like since that large incident, he ain't fucked nobody. And so um, Samuel didn't care. He was ready to, to go at it. So they were about to tussle. And then Sophia came out and was like, cut it out. Samuel goes to check on Emma and then her and Danilo have a conversation. She, of course, brings up Fina. He, of course, gets upset. Anna had walked out there. She saw the scene and was like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah. And then she's like, let me talk to you for a minute. So they go and talk and Anna just pretty much tells her, um, maybe you need to stop bringing up Fina. You know, <laughs> that man's eyes have been glued to you all day. He married you marriage marriage takes work it's not an easy thing especially with arranged marriages she's like just stop bringing up fina stop doing it to yourself and she knew she was right but it was almost like he was this gentleman with her and she didn't see a fire in him like a passion in him unless she brought up fina's name but i'm like but that's because that's what you're doing because if he's staring at you that means you're not you're not paying attention to him you're not looking at him so you're not looking to see the fire you're not looking to see the passion because you're still stuck on the idea that he's stuck on fina 
Because all you can keep in your brain is he kept fucking blondes for years. So he's not over Fina. So as long as that is in her head, this is going to be her reaction. Um, he takes her to the family mansion. They're in Indianapolis. And um, when they get there, um, of course, she's a ball, ball of nerves. She goes in the bathroom, changes into her red lingerie, comes out. She sees his desire. Um, and then he masks it real quick. And that pisses her off. So then she decides she's going to make him, you know, show her anger. Because she's going to see passion one way or another. And so that bitch starts saying stuff like, um, you know, what is it? You don't want to claim me like Remo claimed Fina? Why won't you just take me like Remo took Fina? And he is boiling piss, you know? <laughs> He's pissed off. And she just kept saying shit like that. And was like, at least Remo takes what he wants. And now he has Fina and the kids. He's got a family. Why won't you claim me before someone else does? And I was like, oh my gosh, this girl is pushing him. So he pushed her on the bed and he was about to fuck her. But then he saw she really didn't want this. You know, and so he stopped and then she got mad all over again and she went in the bathroom and she's like, you know, screw it. You know, um, what did she say to him? He was trying to be a, I can't remember what she said, but he was trying to be a gentleman to her and like not giving to that wild rough side, but she took it as he doesn't really want me. So see how if you just talk about shit, if you really say what you think, some shit can be cleared up, but she won't say that. She's just going to keep all the thoughts in her head. It's so, it's so fucking crazy. So she goes to sleep eventually, but she cried herself to sleep and he heard it all because he couldn't go to sleep either. Um, so the next day, um, the next morning she makes arrangements to have lunch with Anna and her mom and the other different women in the family. He wakes up and he's like, we need to talk. You know, we really need to talk about the type of marriage we want. And she's like, for what? And she said to him, you don't want me. You don't desire me. So what's the point of me trying? Like, I give up. And so then he says, I don't want you. I don't desire you. Like, where do you get this from? He's like, it took everything in me not to rip your clothes off last night and put my face between your legs and fuck you into oblivion. She's shocked to hear this because it's not what she was expecting. But he told her, I want a good marriage. He saw the marriage between his parents. It was an arranged marriage, but they did fall in love with one another. And he wants a chance to have that too. And this shocked her because this was not the conversation. She didn't see the conversation going this way. But she made a comment like, you know, it was an arrangement with Serafina too. But it seemed to be more to you because you couldn't let go of her because you kept fucking blondes. And he was like, I wasn't in love with her. He was like, but it was a matter of my pride. Stupid, yes, but it was my pride. And he says it was just a matter of, you know, someone took her from me. And that was hard for me to accept. He was like... um, he wanted her because everyone considered her like the it girl, you know, she was perfection to everyone. And so I wanted what everyone else had wanted, you know, but it was mine and someone took it from me. So again, his pride is why he wasn't able to fully let go. So Sophia then talked about like having, you know, Fina ripped from her and everything and how that affected her family. And it kind of, he kind of realized, damn, I wasn't realizing that it was an effect on a lot of people. It wasn't just me. So then they decide they're going to try and work on it. Um, he made her breakfast. Um, she was shocked because she didn't even know he could cook. She can't cook. Um, but he's going to give her um, eventually a tour of the house. And they then leave for lunch. Well, she's going to lunch with the girls. He's just going to drop her off and pick her up. Um, so then... They take a shower, go to, go downstairs, and that's when he gives her the tour of the house, the estate, because it's huge. There's a koi pond. She fell on her ass because um, they popped up and it scared her. Um, then he gave her some pellets because he told her they just think you're coming to feed them. So then he gave some pellets and they kind of come up and they eat out of his hand. 
and then she did it was a really cute moment and then she told him um before that um she wanted to know actually this was a conversation they had before they came downstairs but she had asked him like what do you expect from me as a wife like is there anything you need from me and he was just kind of like you know you'll go to events with me and stuff like that but for the most part you know you know I, I think you're good but she could tell there was something else but he didn't he said no and she's like no tell me and he said well emma works with disabled children and there's a charity that she works with and since she's going to be moving to minneapolis she's not gonna be able to do it and she was like oh i'll do it you know i know i'm not disabled but i would love to help it sounds like a great cause and of course that made him happy um then he asked her you know is there anything you want to do and um you know anything you like to do and she likes to swim and stuff like that um, she did say she wanted to learn how to cook. So he's going to have a chef come and teach her. And then um, she also told him, you know, she's thinking about in the spring taking a couple of classes at the college. And he said, that's fine. And she that shocked her because apparently in their world, not too many want the women to go off to college. Um, Anna's going to go off to college, but that's because who she's um, arranged, promised to marry is is the son of a politician. So that's why she was able to do that. Um, she thought it was nice that he was open to it. And so again, it just seems like if you just have conversations, <laughs> you know, you can find out a lot more about each other. Um, he did kind of let her know, like, you know, when it comes to getting to know people and falling for people, she had a schoolgirl crush. Okay. Cause she didn't know that man from Adam. So it was just a schoolgirl crush. You didn't know him. So you, if you don't know me, you can't love me. So that started to resonate with her. Like, you know what? Yeah. And so now he's starting to get to know her. They're starting to get to know each other. And it's nice. A couple of weeks pass. Um, it's now Emma's wedding. And Emma had had a freak out a week or so prior Cause she was thinking Samuel didn't want to marry her, but Sophia offered to go talk to her and calm her down. Um, but she again, wasn't going to tell her about the deal. So then the day of the wedding, they're getting ready and they wind up having this nice, deep, passionate kiss. And it was so much that it made the girl panties wet. And so of course his dick was hard, but they had to get to the wedding, but she wanted him to know that he had affected her. So she took her panties off and was like, I need to change them. And he was like, oh, okay. So then they go to the wedding and her feet are hurting. Um, it was a great event. She goes off in a dark corner to find a place to take her shoes off. He comes and finds her and he starts massaging her feet. They start kissing again. Girl's panties get soaked again. <laughs> and then Anna catches them. And... Um, they stopped kissing, of course, but then when Anna walks off, she takes her panties, her uh, thong, she took them off, and she put them in his pocket, and he, of course, had this dark lust in his eyes, so then um, when her and Anna talked, Anna was like, I'll give you two weeks before you cave in, <laughs> so then two weeks passed, same thing has been kind of happening throughout these two weeks, they kiss and stuff, but it doesn't go further, because she had told him she needed time. And so, um, she's thinking like, okay, this is the night she's ready to do it. And they start kissing, it's getting hot and heavy. And then she gets in her head and bam, she goes dry. I'm like, damn, this is just, oof. And so in the morning they try it again, same thing fucking happened. So he told her, okay, I'm going to have a surprise for you when we get home tonight. He had also asked her if he could read some of her writing. And she kind of was embarrassed because it's like sappy love stuff. Um, so I think one of the courses she said she was going to take was a creative writing course in college. So more weeks pass and um, still the same issue. Oh, no. He bought her the vibrator. and she put it in her pussy and he had the remote control that you know to control it and so she put it in they had this awesome session with the vibrator he got so hard he wound up coming in his hands it was super erotic 
And then they cleaned up. She pulled out one of her notebooks with her stories and she let him read it. And then basically it was a story showing, you know, telling of how the first time she wanted to make love, it would be in front of a fire and all this type of stuff. And he's just kind of like, well, you know, we can make that happen. I know the lodge isn't your favorite place, but we can do this, you know? And she's like, okay, she's all down for it. So, cause at this point it's been five weeks and she's like, he's like, I can't take it no more. <laughs> So they get to the cabin. They have a great time. He finally is able to eat her pussy. She lost it. Um, she was ready to fuck, but then he was like, "Nope, I want to fuck you tomorrow, and I'm going to give you that scene you desired in front of the fireplace, and then I'm going to come inside you." And sure enough, that's what happened. Next day, nice, intense lovemaking slash fuck session, and then they spent the next three days fucking all over the house. She gave him a blowjob for the first time. She had wanted to, um, what she had wanted to do with him. And he taught her, you know, how to do it. Came in her mouth. She swallowed. They had a conversation about Fina because, you know, this bitch stays with this fucking person in her head. So <laughs> because it, um, she knew she was falling for him. She'd already failed to be honest, but she, I guess she really needed to fully get this out. And so, she was just wanting to know, like, you hate them. You hate Remo. I get that. But it's like, and you call it your pride or whatever it is. But, you know, I don't know. It, she just couldn't understand the blonde thing for so many years. That was the hard thing for her to wrap around. It was like, I can't fully get why you would keep fucking somebody that looks similar to her. That is, that just sounds like you can't get over this person. And he was like, it wasn't that. It's pretty much he was doing hate fucks with these women. It was like when he would fuck them hard, it was like he was punishing her. And he's like, he knows his twisting is wrong. He gets it. But that's where he was emotionally. And I was like, okay. I mean, I I understand it to an extent, but still, I'm just like, Ew. you know. So some months go by. They are um, getting closer, falling more for each other. They go to a party like seven or eight months later. She has the vibrator in her pussy. He's controlling it. And so she looks over at him and she's flushed and they go to the bathroom. She sucks him off. He comes in her mouth and then he gets on his knees. He licks her ass and he's like, I want my dick in your ass. And so that's what he does. And they have this intense ass fuck session in the bathroom. Somebody knocks on the, on the door. They had to stop for a moment, but then they finished. And then we um, find out she's been talking to Fina like once a week. Of course, you know, she hasn't told him. But her and Fina have planned to meet up in Missouri. And so Danilo is out of town. I think he went to Chicago. And so they're going to meet up. So she gets there and she snuck off because she apparently had these early classes, but she was able to dodge her detail. She got a rental car, drove to Missouri. Don't remember what city. And um, when she gets there, Remo was there in the car with Fina and she got scared because she was like oh shit what is this a trap you know? but Remo stayed in the car Fina got out they went in this little diner place they talked got caught up on everything she didn't tell her about the challenges that they had had in their beginning of their marriage um Sophia felt like you know I don't want every door in that you know so she kept that part out um she felt like it would be disrespectful to Danilo to talk about that stuff um, because they have been building trust, even though <laughs> he gonna be pissed if he find out she here. And then a car pulls up, and guess who's in the fucking car? Danilo. Danilo gets out of the car, comes over to her. She's looking scared because she's like, "Oh shit, I done fucked up." Remo gets out the car. He's got his gun drawn. Now. Danilo's got his drawn. It's just a whole scene. But she was watching to see the effect that Fina would have on Danilo. And it scared her because the wind was blowing and it made Fina look like an angel. And she was just like, oh my gosh, if this is what he wants after this much time, like I'm done. And so she says it to him. She's just like, I'm done. 
And he's like, what? And she's like, I can't do this anymore. If all this time you still want her, you still want this revenge to take her out, you know, to take her like, um, I'm, I'm never going to be enough and I'm not going to let myself feel that way again. And she was like, you should be happy that she left because we got to be together. And it's like, she was just like, I- I'm not doing this. So they have words back and forth, but then Remo backed up and, um, Fina as well. And Danilo was looking at both of them with such hate. He could have like took both of them out right then. So then this, this, again, they start pleading for them not to do it, you know? So then he was like, get in the car and she gets in his car. And then she was like, oh, shoot the rental car. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about the rental car. <laughs> and he was like, why would you do that? Like, it's not safe. Like, how could you? And she's like, I want to see my sister. And he was like, she was like, how did you know anyway? And he was like, Carlos, which is part of her detail, had figured something was going on with her. So they tracked her ass and found her. And so then they get back home and he tells her, you know, like he was terrified. Like something could have happened to you. He was like, did you not see that she had her husband with her? You should have told me. And she was like, but you wouldn't have let me go. And he was like, yeah, but it would have been for your protection. He was like, you know, anything could have happened to you. And Fina couldn't have stopped it. And she was just like, she hadn't fully thought about that. Because she was just so excited to see her sister since they hadn't seen each other in over six years. So then she was like, you know, with Lu- well, no, I'm going to say this again. He was talking about uh, Danilo with losing his dad, what happened with Fina, you know, and also like what happened with his sister. I don't think he said what happened with Fina. I think he said what happened with his sister. Like he told her if something happened to you, I couldn't survive it. And he was like, I love you. He's like, I can't lose you. And she, it finally clicked, right? He like, she really got it. Like, oh, he really does love me. And like, finally, you know, she's like, well, I mean, I can be stubborn. I'm sorry. So then two years later, um, or is it three years later? Might be three. Few, well, a couple years, a few years later, because she's twin, she's 23, I think. She has her bachelor's. Um, they haven't had any children because he had told her there was no pressure. Um, but when she hit 23, she was ready to have that conversation. So she goes off. It takes them about a good six months. She gets pregnant and she's pregnant with twin boys. And so she doesn't want any more kids after these. She's happy. He'll get an heir and that's it. She's good. He could go for more kids, but only if that's what she wants. Um, and they just went ahead and they had a wonderful life. I like this book. I did like it. I didn't like the beginning part because it was very problematic as hell. And I did not like that part, but the rest of the book, I wish we could have had more of that because that part, that portion of the book, like once she hit 18, I'm like, I'm happy now. <laughs> this works for me (laughs) so what did you all think of fragile longing let me know drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys think again if you all have any suggestions please put those down in the comment section below and i will definitely look at some books with that author and and definitely review them um if you are in the market looking for a beautiful notebook or journal i do have those available and that link is going to be available down in the description section below thank you so much for listening um make sure you like and subscribe and as always thank you for tuning in to the always reading book club